Welcome guys. Today is, like I promised, is the connections video. Now this one will be quite long because I want to try to make it a very comprehensive video where you guys are going to be able to grasp um, the concepts and find out exactly how everything is supposed to connect. You can play virtual pinball without any hardware. You don't need contactors, you don't need solenoids, you don't need 5 LED flash bar. You can just have a computer, run the software, and then you will be able to enjoy the nice tables. If you wish to have force feedback, you will require certain hardware to make this work. Now, I'm going to pop this open in a few minutes. You will be able to see all the connections and the way it works. I've got the hood up and I'm going to get into the connections. So in order to uh, get a pinball, virtual pinball machine uh, working with solenoids, contactors, shakers, knocker, uh, just name it, you need to have certain hardware. To add the force feedback, you need to have these devices. And in order to have tables communicate the code to the hardware, uh, you need a few things and the software. The software is called DUF, Direct Output Framework. And this is like the basically the middle piece between the table that are coded to send signal to the, I call them the toys. Uh, the visual pinball, for example, the ball goes up the ramp and will trigger flasher. This is coded in the table, so you don't have to code anything. All you need to do is to connect these flasher on your system. I'm not gonna redo all the uh, software or the piece that I've uh, recorded, guys. Uh, look look in my, my library, I've got everything that I've done is listed. So this one is called DOF Config. There's also a video called DOF Config Overview. Also Terry Red has some good videos about DOF. So there's a lot of stuff out there. So just uh, familiarize yourself with DOF. That's kind of the important piece that make all this work. Uh, also, we have Dufflinks. Dufflinks is a piece of software that was coded by DDH69. And what it is, it allows you to play FX3 and Future Pinball. Same thing as if you would play Visual Pinball. So it's like that extra piece of software that you require. Now I have a different uh, hardware and I'm going to explain the connections. The previous video, I've basically kind of told you what the features were. Now I'm going to tell you how it is connected. Here I got a few backlit buttons. You have four connections. Two go to the power and two go to the signal for like, you know, when you press, it sends a key to the computer. So the backlit all have four connections. Um, the way it's connected is I have a zero delay board. There are different solutions. Uh, people use different things. Here is the zero delay board. It's very cheap, it's like 10 bucks. And then it comes with the wires, quick connectors. And there's like a, a data and a ground pin that you connect to your button. So you can see here, that's one of the button that I have. It's like, it looks like this. Uh, I like these because there's no clicking. It's just like you press and then you send the signal. Now, do you see? There are two pins outside the little gray block. Now these are going to be for the power. And the one that's on the gray block, these ones are for your data. So they will connect to the uh, zero delay board. Now speaking of other solutions for connections, so the white pins at the front, these are for buttons. So you can have the harness, uh, which comes with the board, and then you can connect that to your buttons. It will uh, basically replace the zero delay board if you wish to not have a zero delay board. Now here I have a button that's to start my computer. Uh, I have, it's basically just two pins. Uh, it's the ground and it's the power that goes onto my motherboard. There are pins on the motherboard. Uh, you know when you press the buttons of your, or the power button of your computer, it turns on on the case. Well, I don't have a case, so I had to plug that directly onto the pins of my motherboard. It will it will be different from motherboard to motherboard the pins. 
look in your manual and it will basically you're looking at the power uh, pin and the ground pin for the uh, power like for to start up and uh, you just connect that uh, I use DuPont cables if you want to see how I connected this look at my uh, how to build a 4k computer video I have uh, the demo on how I connected it now here I have a fan this is a blower fan uh, usually typically you will find them in boats engine compartments I think it's to just kind of blow the exhaust out of the engine compartment this is 12 volts and what I have is I have uh, a, like a clip that clips the uh, hose in place and I have a connector that connects basically my fan here my uh, pipe and so I can disconnect when I open the door it's easy to uh, you know move my door around underneath I have a gear motor this is an electric window gear motor that you can find on Amazon it is the same process for every toy that you're going to connect now there are two ways you can connect this okay there's the way if you do not have a Saint smart board if you don't have a Saint smart board like this and just have a LED whiz red which is the power uh, this is using 12 volts will go on the 12 volt positive of your, of your power supply the ground will come to one of the port on your LED whiz uh, let's say we decide to use port 1 the ground for the gear motor will come on port 1 so you will go to the DOF config tool online and in ports assignment under the LED whiz port 1 you would use the drop down and you would actually pick the gear motor right here and that's it for the DOF config tool for your gear motor and then in the uh, DOF config tool for the fan let's say we connect the uh, the positive of this to the 12 volts and the ground will go to port let's say number two of the LED whiz and you will go in DOF config and in the drop down like I just showed you would pick fan for port number two now the way I have this set up is different because I'm using a Saint Smart relay board uh, a Saint relay is something that allows to turn something on and off it's like a light switch but it's done the signal is sent electronically now this is what I use so the contactors the solenoids the shaker the gear the blower fan I got my knocker and so on so this is what I use the middle pin is going to be the 12 volts coming from my power supply now you can see there's a normally closed and there's a normally open port so the normally closed means that if you connect your contactors to this as soon as you turn that on it will click you don't want that uh, but for virtual pinball we're going to use a normally open port see like there's an open circuit like uh, the uh, circuit is not complete so that's where we're going to connect this terminal here to the positive of the gear motor now you can see I have all my toys connected to the Saint Smart board so the way I just showed you it's basically I replicated that for every single toy like the middle port instead of running a wire to the 24 volts for each and one of them I got that daisy chained so here is the input pins so each pin will be linked to your toy so for example our, our fan which is on port 1 is in number 1 so you would use a DuPont cable to connect that pin right here and the output of that pin would go to a fuse so I've got that coming out pin 1 coming out from my Saint Smart and it goes to my it goes to my fuse right here the fuse I use it will really depend on what kind of toy you're using uh, but I'm using 0.5 amps fuses the output of this fuse will go to port number one of your LED whiz or your pack drive 
Uh, like I've showed in the previous video, the pack drive is exactly the same thing as the LED with, and this is what I'm using for my cabinet. Now I want to talk about the cable management and power management. So it's important to have your kind of cabinet in a you know pretty clean state because what happens is if you have wires all over, then you may have actually a problem with um, noise in your wires. Also, you can have some you know trying to troubleshoot becomes a very difficult issue. So what I suggest is number one, have terminal blocks. Uh, at different locations of your cabinet. So for example, this is my ground. So I have all ground on the cabinet guys are connected together. So if you have, for example, I have a 12 volts power supply, I have two 5 volts, I have a 40, I have a 24. All grounds will come and connect to this board right here. Uh, and uh, from here you can connect your, your toys or whatever. So this is how the ground works. I have one here, I have one in the back, and uh, so it makes the ground connection a little easier to manage. For the power, uh, also you might want some kind of central power uh, connections. So I have my Quattro board, which uh, you guys have probably seen that. Uh, it basically has four inputs and uh, multiple outputs for different voltages. Here is a, an, a, another terminal block, but this one I use for 24 volts because I have a lot of 24 volts. And uh, this is um, kind of going to my different toys. This is kind of neat. They're cheap and it's a good solution for cable and power management. Now, once you're done wiring everything, uh, it's a good idea to have like tie wraps, have little um, shrink tubes or something to keep your wires together. Uh, it just like makes it a little more organized and a little more appealing on the eye. Here I have, uh, you can see I have quick connectors that I use. So these, for example, I have everything's labeled. So one side goes to my contactor and the other side goes to my, my Saint Smart board. And uh, it's a quick connector. If I need to change something, I can just unplug the wire and Bob's your uncle. Here I have my two 24 volts solenoids. So these are for my flippers. And uh, I like this because the noise is kind of low and uh, if you put a contactor, it's kind of loud and I wanted to keep the noise fairly low. Here, contactor number five. Uh, I'm going to show you this one because the other one are kind of hidden underneath the, uh, the boards here. But same thing. So I have the positive going to the normally open port of the Saint Smart and the ground goes to the ground. Uh, don't forget guys, each device that you have between the positive and negative, you gotta have a diode. So I'm just going to run the sequence here of my uh, simple LED and you will hear the uh, sound. So these are just the different contactors being triggered. Uh, so I got uh, Port 11, I use my fan, so here's the sound for the fan. So it comes out of here, and it basically sends a draft in my face, which is kind of cool. And the gear motor, you can hear the gear, uh, it's pretty loud. Uh, I actually got it close to the front so I can hear it better. The shaker motor, so if I, see? It, it vibrates the table. Now what I want to show you, this little guy here is a variable motor speed controller. And see, it actually reduces the uh, intensity of my shaker. If I turn it really loud, the whole table shakes too much and it actually, uh, my LCD screen doesn't like that. <laughs> this is my knocker, it's really loud, it's on 40 volts. And this is the beacon. The beacon is on 24 volts. They're designed to be 12, but I pushed 24, so it spins faster. I've got these connected together. Uh, they, the two powers go to the normally open port of my Saint Smart board, and the two grounds are connected together, and they go on the ground. Now here's the uh, inside of the back, the back glass. So there's um, a few components. Here I have power strips. I got two of those and I have terminal blocks. This is for ground 
and here is for 12 volts and 5 volts. So I have, for example, I have 12 volts. I have one going to the power of my 12 volt power supply. And all these here, the three here and the three here, they're basically 12 volt ports. Same thing here, five, five volts. So I just like this. I have the Teensy with the Octo 2811. This is for the addressable LEDs. I'll talk about this. I have my, this is my LED management board. Uh, I designed this board. Uh, I stopped, I used to sell it. I, I still sell it, but I remove my e-commerce. Uh, it just now, if you want this, just send me an email and I can send you the details. But what it is basically is each LED connects to this input right here. I got some high quality um, resistors and here is the output going to the pack drive or the LED Wiz. Now this is the five LED bar. So this is kind of cool. This is uh, a called flasher bar. It will uh, flash during the gameplay. And uh, I use RGB on this. I don't have addressable LEDs. I have red, green, and blue. Each LED uses Actually, each color of the LED uses a port. So for example, the red is going to be on port, let's say uh, 10 of the LED Wiz. This is going to be on port 11, and this is going to be on port 12. Now this one here, uh, it's gonna be like, you know, port 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you get the idea. So this is how it works. Now, these guys are a little different because I don't use uh, Saint Smart. It goes directly to the LED Wiz. So what I have is I have the two power connected together going to the 12 volts. The two ground connected together going to port 17 of my LED Wiz. This is how I got this set up. But I, this is my lunch and this is the start. So in the game, when it's time to, let's say, launch the ball, this will blink. So the way I have this set up is I have the power cable of this goes to the 12 volts. The ground goes to one of the port on my LED Wiz. And then in DOF config for the LED Wiz on port 20, you're going to pick launch ball. This is actually port 19 on my LED Wiz. So port 19 in DOF config, port 19, uh, of the LED Wiz and the drop down, I will pick start. I have under cab lights. Um, these are regular LEDs. I didn't actually pick the addressable LEDs. Uh, some people do. And what I have is instead of having the, uh, the wire going all the way in, I got my dedicated 12 volt power supply here. Here I have a night mode, kind of small board that I built. Um, what I want I wanted this for playing at night and the way it does it's easy It's just a switch and then when you push it it kills a power. That's it That's all it is and the way I've got this wired. It's very easy. So I have Let's say that's my 24 volts. So the power goes to one of the pin of my switch and the other pin of the switch goes to connect to this one right here, so this is my 24 volt power bank, right? So everything out of here feeds 24 volts, but if my input is closed, nothing gets fed. Here I've got my knocker. My knocker is fairly loud, I would say, because I'm using 40 volts. Now, this is going to be the object of a separate video because it's using something kind of unique called a solid state relay. Uh, so I'm going to explain everything, but bottom line, you need this if you wish to power something a little more powerful because the relay board, this is like a Saint Smart, that's just one unit uh, relay board. This is actually the maximum voltage for this is 30 volts. If you got anything over 30 volts, you're going to blow this. This is for my surround sound feedback. I got two amps. Uh, this is like the uh, the power. Uh, they're 150 watts, and uh, here you've got the control for the uh, different, the volume, the bass, the treble, and I've got 
this is what an exciter speaker looks like. This is uh, kind of neat. This is my latest edition. They actually conduct vibration and noise through the surface and using the surface. So it's really cool and it adds a lot of feedback. Now this is going to be the um, object of the video as well because I'm going to, I don't want to jam everything in here. There's uh, already enough stuff as it is. I'm going to have a video on how to set up surround sound feedback. Uh, just stay tuned, it's going to come up in the next couple of weeks. One actually important uh, feature of a cab is the digital plunger. Now, the digital plunger is kind of neat because what it does, it has a module that if the table supports it, you pull this and then it will launch the, the ball for real. See? And then you release it. And it goes. So that's kind of neat. See? You press on the table and it actually moves. While you're playing, you can push on the table and it will move the, the ball in the game. Uh, what it is, it's a kit and I'm gonna have the link below if you wish to order one or you can make your own. I've ordered the uh, KL27 board and I'm tr gonna actually try to make my own. It's probably gonna be the object of another video as well. But for the time being, I got this one here. Um, it's an expensive kit, it's like 150 bucks. So, and then if you build your own, you can probably build it for like $40. So I'm going to try to build my own and if I, I'm successful, I'm going to post the video. So this goes to, there's like a, a pin connecting on the back of the cylinder. Um, the cylinder just slides basically outside your regular plunger and uh, it clips. You just push it back here. And this is the uh, the board. Uh, I've showed you the board before. So it's basically USB going to your computer and the pins from the plunger goes to the back. And then you'll see, see the light, the light flash? This is when I push the cab. So you can set up tilt, you can set up moving the ball. Um, it's all in the software and it's kind of neat. Guys, before we uh, move on to the next part, which is going to be the addressable LEDs, uh, I just want to talk about uh, the resources that you can find online. Now, the, um, our old site, uh, I got rid of the old site. It was too much work. It wasn't that pretty. I got rid of the e-commerce. And uh, now what I'm doing is I'm just focusing on trying to get you guys uh, basically pointing to the resource. And uh, what we have on the site, if you can still go to maymanabox.com, but it'll point to, uh, which is the virtual pinball portal. So we have all the different resource here. Uh, you've got the virtual pinball sheet. We point to pretty much all major sites where you can find the tables, uh, the DOF config tool where you can configure tables. Uh, you can find some future pinball, also pinball, pin cab um, passion. If you have uh, the chance to speak French, this is a phenomenal website. Uh, this is so much, like there's a lot of resource here. Um, this is actually a really, really good website. So, and then here, the categories here, we still have the guides, some of the guides here, uh, linked to the hardware. The hardware being all the parts that we've uh, used to build the, um, you know, the, the, the system. Uh, if it doesn't load, just disable your ad blocker and then it should, it should work. Now under guides, we have the addressable LED guide that we have. Uh, and then there's actually a good one, which is the building guides. It's a list of most of the, the most common guides that will help you guys. For example, we have solid sound feedback, BAM. Um, we have the virtual pinball guide by Michael Roberts, uh, MJR. This is an ex excellent, excellent guide. He's, it looks very professional, uh, everything's in detail. I strongly suggest that you uh, look at this guide if you wish to build a system. Uh, Michael's done a fantastic job. Uh, so now just keep in mind, not everything is hosted under one roof. So you're gonna have to look around. That's why we kind of got this here so you can actually look everywhere to get your stuff uh, complete. And the last thing I want to talk about the portal is uh, Discord. Now, uh, we're officially launching it now. 
Uh, we have a few people uh, that are actually kind of beta testing. We, um, it's basically a chat, a chat group with a little um, hosting area. So clicking this, you will accept the invite then you can just continue or if you have already an account you can just log in by the way this is hosted this is um, a google product and uh, we're kind of kind of i kind of like this so what it is it's it's like a chat group guys with uh, different sections where you can um, for example guides see i got everything that i find that i think it's relevant i post here and i want people to do this as well uh, it's kind of like a crowdsource if you click on hardware, uh, these are the different posts for um, the basically addressable LEDs. And then you can click and it will link you to where the resource is being hosted. Now, ROMs, here are the different, you know, talk, basically you can chat about ROMs. Um, the uh, virtual pinball sites, we have the different sites listed. Uh, VPS is uh, actually Ducks is a, a baby, which is the virtual pinball sheet. Uh, when we get some updates, we'll, we'll post it here. Uh, we have like a chit chat area where you can basically just talk about anything. Uh, you can basically just kind of just, you know, talk about whatever you want. Now, we only have one rule here, folks. Respect. If you do not, if you're not respectful, you're going to get banned and you will not be allowed back. That's the only rule we have. Just be respectful, respect members, respect the admins and everything should be good. You will be able to contribute, add links here under software. Uh, if you wish to find something about DOF, um, Duff links. Uh, we have Pinup Popper here. Uh, so we have, I got a video that I did. I got a video that Terry did uh, setting up. I actually got videos uh, that David did. So basically pretty much all the resource that we come across that we find is relevant, we're gonna post here. So I think it's gonna be a good place to hang out, to chat. Uh, people will be able to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, we hope you guys enjoy this. Next topic, addressable LEDs. I'm sure some people had nightmares about this trying to set that up. I gotta say, that's probably the most difficult thing that I had to do in my cab was get, get, getting my head wrapped around addressable LEDs. Now about a year ago, I created a guide um, and then you can find it on the uh, wiki website to try to help you set up your addressable LEDs on your cab. Now this is 144 LEDs per meter. Uh, this is what I'm using. Uh, it's um, WS2812B and uh, this is uh, 5 volts. 144 or 60 here's the difference so you're basically missing almost yeah you're missing every every second LEDs you're missing and um, it makes a big difference it's more fluid so I would say if you want to install this on your cab put the 144 how it is connected well it, it's um, if, again, if you read the guide, you're going to understand. I got a guide and the video. So uh, this is the TNC and the Octo 2811 that we have. And um, you're going to basically connect that on your computer. And there's an RJ45 that's going to connect on the, uh, on the right port right here. This is the RJ45. You cut it. And then you keep only two wires. You keep the white and orange and the orange. And then the orange, you're gonna connect to the green. The orange, you're gonna connect to the green input of your strip. Now, uh, the one I have on my cab, I'll show you, is different than this one. Uh, I have another wire for the power separate. So, so see the N, it'll say DI, that's for the input. So you've got the green, and uh, the green goes to the orange. The ground right here goes to the white and orange. That's it. And uh, the power is a 5 volts. You're going to send that to your power supply, to the 5 volt on your power supply. Here you've got the, uh, that's the output. That's going to the next strip.
The way I do it is I use the green only throughout the, the cabinet and I feed my ground and power separately. So this is like a 256 flexible strip that you can find on AliExpress or uh, Amazon for about, eh, I would say between 30 and 50 bucks. Not a bad strip. I've seen people build their own and uh, you can actually build something like this, right? So I've got, uh, this was just a test. This is like a dot matrix, but with using the 60. See the difference? Like when you get animation and stuff, it's not, it's not the same. See the arrows? So the input would be here and it travels all the way. And then here, see, so you would have the green from here to that one because that's traveling from here to here. The power you can have each strip ground and power goes to the power supply. So think of it that way. Each strip is lit separately. So only worry about the green really. And then the green will go from here and see you follow the arrow. And from here you do the same thing. The middle pin, which is the green, you connect to this one and then you follow the arrow. So that's how you got to do it if you want to build your own. Now I have this one pre-built and I have it on hinges with tinted plexiglass. And the way I have this set up is these two wires, they're my ground and power. This one here, that's the uh, input, the green, right? And the white, it's the two that goes to my uh, RG45. This one here is the output. So this goes to my LED strip. That's right here. And look at the arrows. See the arrows? So it's coming down here. And from here, I've got this strip connecting just the green. I just got the green, the middle one, connected to this guy right here. And again, the power, I take care of the power separately. Each strip goes to my five volts ground and power. From here, you can see the arrows, it goes up. And it connects to my 24 addressable LED speaker ring. And same thing, it goes in the in and the out of this goes to this guy right here. That's it, you're done. Once it's connected, what you need to do is we're gonna go into software right now. I'm gonna quickly show you how it works. So in the software, you're going to click uh, the tools. Again, I'm not going through every step, guys, because I got a full video on this. So the board selected, make sure you have the TNC 3.2, 3.1. That's important. And then you go to ports right here and note the port that you've got. See, I've got COM3, so I keep that in mind. What we're going to do is we're going to do File, Open, and then we're going to pick Basic Test. In the Basic Test, if you scroll down, you're going to see the number of LEDs per strip. See, I, I, I think by default it's 120. Put the number of LEDs you have. Um, I think I have 590 total, so I just put 600, and it's going to send a signal to uh, a strip of 600, and uh, that way you can see if your strips are working. To send the signal, all you do is you click to the upload button right here, and it's going to upload to your Teensy, and the test will start. So you see it's going from top to bottom, left to right, that's important. There you go. So once you've got all your LEDs uh, lit, uh, well at least that's a problem out of the way. So you know now your LEDs are working. That's a TNC loader software uh, from uh, PJRC, uh, where I got my TNC from. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click the auto button right here. I'm going to click file, open hex. And the open hex is actually the, uh, the hex file for the Teensy strip controller. So I'm... 
see I've got two files. I've got the 1.1 or 1.01 and I got 1.02. 1.02 does not work for me. I do not know why. But if you got issues, try that. And then I'm going to say open. And uh, now what we're going to do is see how it's... Uh, there's no icons lit here. See, there's a button on the Teensy. Press it. And here you see now we have two green buttons. You know, arrow down. This is the program. So click. Done. And then we're going to click reboot. Okay. Now, you're going to see that you're, for me anyway, my strips, they remain lit until I load a table. The first time anyway. So just don't be too concerned if that happens. It, it's just normal. Then I loaded my table and see all the lights now are off and I only got my dot matrix being triggered. If I add credits and I press start, you'll see, see? I got my LEDs and it's working. There you go. So here's my cabinet file and it is located in direct output config. Now you do not have one that comes with the system. You have to build yours. So I'm gonna have mine in the description. You can use that as a guide, but you probably will have to change, uh, well, you will have to change the uh, COM port, uh, the number of strips, and uh, which port they're assigned to, because it's, it's gonna, probably gonna be different unless you get the same setup as mine. So see right here, uh, I've got the first line 592 and I got my COM port right here, COM3. But you will need this file inside your direct output config folder in order for the LEDs to work. So that's it guys, that's uh, all the hardware in this virtual pinball cabinet. Um, there are a lot of resources out there. Uh, you will find YouTube uh, a wealth of knowledge. Also, all those different websites that uh, we use for the uh, build. Like I've got my my site, Maim in a Box. Uh, there's a VP forums. There's vpinball.com. There's VP Universe. And for those of you who speak French, uh, Pinball Passion is a great, great, great website. I've actually used this website a lot. They've got a lot of good people uh, writing about stuff. So ne never limit yourself to only one site. Uh, it's because no one site hosts everything. So you need to kind of look around. But uh, with all the guides that we've put together and uh, some of the guides that Terry did, some of the guides that uh, MJR, M MJR doesn't do videos, but he has some great guides. I'm gonna have his latest guide in the link below. It's a phenomenal uh, stuff, guys. Thank you for watching, and then we'll catch you in the next video.